Hey, this is Levi Sim for photofocus.com and I'm excited today I get to sit down here with you and with Ian Jones and uh, yep. I'd like to introduce you to Ian. Ian, tell us about yourself and, and what you like to photograph, what you like to do. How you doing? Uh, yeah, my name's Ian Jones. I'm a local photographer here in, in Pittsburgh. Um, I started doing photography maybe like five, six years ago. And um, I basically just kind of like learned, my, like learned myself. It was like self-taught. Um, but I really got into photography going down and shooting like street photography, um, shooting like people in action and, and stuff downtown. Uh, like I said, I'm from Pittsburgh. So I had access to like downtown streets. So that's kind of where I first started shooting. And I, I feel like that's really where I got my love for photography. So like that and like the editing, the whole process of going down, adventuring, shooting, and then coming home and editing the images you have. And then that's kind of like where all my, my like photography journey started. So that's like what got me into it. Right on. I'm, I'm pretty similar that way myself. Just just dove in my myself, started photographing everything and mm -hmm. exploring, kind of exploring what all the tools do and, yeah. and figuring it out to to make it make it my own um did you ever have you ever have you ever used film cameras no um other than like uh, I'm, I'm just like kodak, asking like no other than like a, a kodak throwaway disposable that i would take to darien lake when i was like 10 no i'm not yeah. i never really got into film i never really right i know there's like a like a nice passion for film and i know a lot of people shoot film but i never really got into it like i'd like to be able to have the photos right away like when i go yeah. out shooting i like to come home and start editing and see what i have instantly so right. it's taking that away from me kind of like bums me out a little bit <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you mm -hmm. um, it's it's interesting to to use a different medium yeah but but if pictures are the thing then it doesn't matter yeah. what medium we use right like yeah the sometimes the faster the better for sure mm -hmm. also when and you get especially into when the passion is there like when you're excited about it you want to yeah. you want to do it when you when you get into film, you also cross that like photography purist line, and right. then you, you deal with a whole nother genre of people. So yeah, then yeah, you've, kinda, yeah. you've hung a sign on yourself when you when you yeah. say I'm a film photographer. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. and don't don't get mad at us film photographers. Oh yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's no, cool, it's, but yeah, is it, is it about photography or is it about the thing inside your camera that records the picture? Who cares? Yeah, I feel like no, I feel like no matter how you get the image and and the right. product you're putting out and the content you're creating, that should be like the kind of the end goal. But absolutely, I was talking to my dentist yesterday, my yeah. the, the dental hygienist, and um, she's a photographer, but only with instant film, and so she she does Polaroids, and she okay. only does multiple exp like double exposures on the same piece of film. And she only does portraits in this particular way, and so it's it's a very specific thing, and that's that's the that's quite literally the only thing she does, and so yeah, and and that's what she's passionate about, and it's yeah. it's really cool. But um, I mean that's great. I mean yeah, <laughs> if, as long as you're passionate about it, and you know the passion is there, and it keeps you motivated and interested. I mean by all means, you know go ahead. Yeah, where um for for you so doing street photography uh what like how would you how would you describe your style of street photography there's a lot of there's a lot of street photography i like to i kind of just like to go out and and just see what's out there and like i'll, I'll take photos of people um or, or cars or automobiles any and if i if i could show any type of like movement in mm -hmm. like in the streets i know a lot of people like to do um i don't like to be seen a lot like when i'm taking photos because I, I know a lot of street photographers or some street photographers like that, like eye contact, you know, like with the other person. And, and it, it does show like the emotion. Um, but I just kind of I don't I don't discredit anything and, and I don't, you know, aim for something or look for a particular thing. I just kind of take photos of whatever catches my eye, if that if that makes sense. So but I like to to me, street photography is um, like it's moody. It's cold edits, and I like to put different um, editing aspects in it, like um, 
I try to catch smoke or steam or mm -hmm. snow, any, anything that adds to the photo because um, sometimes it's just photographing people downtown gets boring after a while. And if you're posting the same, you know, a person or a person behind or just walking, it, it gets kind of, at that point, to me, there's really no interest in that. So I like to find different elements to add it to that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I like it. When, when, when you say add, like I've seen some of your pictures with, with, uh, with mist and, and like steam on the sidewalk and stuff. Yeah. When you say add, are you saying add in post or, or look for that thing and I, then make a picture with that thing live? So I do like a mixture. So mm -hmm. um, I always keep my eye out for people smoking cigarettes because I know if, if I can get a person smoking when they, when they do that um, exhale, I know I can emphasize their, their cigarette smoke, or if there is a natural, if it's naturally snowing, I know I can emphasize and add more snow and, you know, edit, edit that. Um, I like to take natural elements that are there and emphasize it in post more. So I like that. I love, yeah, I'm not I like that. completely making these composite photos. Uh -huh. You know, it's not all Photoshop, but I do, I do all my editing in Lightroom. And then once I have everything finished then i'll take it over into photoshop and then i'll add more aspects to what's there so i love that there's yeah. there's people rolling over right now writing comments as we speak saying that's not pure street photography exactly and that's you can't do that i know and that's that's that goes back to there's there's always an extreme on every niche that you have and yeah street photography is something i've I've ran into a lot where, you know, people will have comments, especially on Reddit. That's don't ever post any photos on Reddit. If you don't, if you can't take criticism, <laughs> right. Right. Um, but yeah, no, that's if a hundred percent actual purist definition from a street photography is just the image and that's it. You don't edit, yeah, you don't yeah. do nothing. You, you, you know, well, that's not fun for me either. You know what right. I mean? So like, I love editing. So, but then again, I'm just going to do what I want. You know what I mean? That's like my style. So. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's impossible. It's impossible to take, to make a, a photograph without doing anything to it. Even on film, you, yeah. you chose the film you're using because of the saturation and color you, yeah. you're using the chemicals and that's going to change the whole way that this whole thing is processed. And so yeah. no, no matter what tool you use to make a picture, mm -hmm. you have already added editing in it at some level you've already added in some kind of um uh, some kind of post-processing and it's not wrong it's just it's the way things have always been with photography yeah and uh and I, I love that you have unapologetically created art instead of the moment alone yeah. because yeah. the the moment doesn't exist either like i'll <laughs> I'll spend on like a, a really good street photo. Like I'll spend like two, three hours on an edit. Yeah. Make sure everything is I'll, I'll erase cigarette butts on the ground. I'll just, I'll clean up. You know, I, I edit a lot. Like I, I live in the edit after, you know, the photo, but. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that the thing that I'm spending time looking at mm -hmm. Like, like I'm, I'm giving you the value of my time looking at it. And I appreciate yeah. that you have made it, you, you've put work into making it worth looking at as well. Yeah. yeah. So I, I appreciate that very much. Then on the other hand, you have the, like more specifically like Instagram, people just blow by it and they don't even, you know what I mean? So you have, you have both sides of it that people will look and appreciate. And then you have people that they just like, eh, they just like, you know, so you, you put a lot of work in something and sometimes it's not seen to how you want it to be seen. Plus you can't get all the details when it's, you know, kind of that small. Right. Right. Well, so how do you conquer that? How do you conquer the instantness of Instagram, the, the brief, the brevity of Instagram? How do you, how do you drive, help people see and enjoy a, a photograph longer? Um, sometimes I'll like put a photo on like my story, which makes it bigger, or mm. I, I have other images that I'll put like physically on my website for people who, you know, want to take that journey and look at more and like find out more about me. Um, 
I post stuff on Twitter too. Like I said, I'll put stuff on Reddit. When you post photos on Reddit, it allows you to post a, a bigger full size image and people can actually click and it gets much larger. So there's other ways to get around it, but it doesn't really cripple me that much to where I worry that much about people not being able to see everything that goes into it. Yeah. Um, because again, to me, it's kind of like a portfolio and a collection of my work and what I'm doing. So how it is, is fine. You know? Yeah. Right. On. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I like it. I like it. Um, and I, I appreciate you thinking about how to conquer that kind of a problem too. Um, we'll start, start thinking Ian, about some pictures you want to show us. What, what do you do? Like, are you said you look for motion, you look for, and, and like mist and smoke swirling is, is a motion yeah. and is very catchy to your eyes. What other things kind of inspire you as you, as you make pictures, do you, do you find yourself going to the same sorts of subjects besides, besides cigarette smoke? Um, not, not really just like people, cars, any type of motion, like um, Pittsburgh isn't very big and you can generally walk from one end to the other and, you know, get a good, a good time downtown and maybe like two, two hours. So typically you just start at one end and you, you know, do your little walk and, um, and you come back and then you just kind of see what photos you have. Now I haven't been, so Ian, down- I, I live in, I live in Franklin, Idaho, man. I can walk okay. across town in like 20 minutes, like yeah. way up town. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's different down there, but um, I haven't been downtown in a while because I like to go downtown when in the winter, I mean, the, the yeah. downtown winter is my absolute favorite thing to shoot and going down there in the summer it's the same thing there's no there's no elements it's just bright sun you know and it's and then again like i said it just it becomes just people over and over and over and over so it becomes boring so i'll cycle through other stuff and then but when winter hits is when i'm going i'll be back down there a lot you know getting my wintery wintery street photos yeah, that quality of light and the and the type of people out and the the type of things happening or there's just more there's just more to shoot and there's more mm-hmm. elements in like the the ground is wet, there's snow. Um being cold, you have steam from people's breaths and the car exhausts. And so there's just more more elements for sure. Right on. Right on. Um so you're you're looking forward to to the winter time. Yeah. Do, you, do you do anything like have you have you ever shot much around the holiday time i was wondering if you have some ideas that we could use to spice up our holiday time pictures um when we're when we're out shooting street photography have you have you ever thought about that no i mean i i'm always taking photos um you may not see everything i'm shooting but usually around like the holiday time i'll do like family portraits or family sessions or fall sessions um mm-hmm. Last week I had uh, back-to-back family shoots in the same location. So like the, you know, everybody wants those like fall, you know, fall. Right. Um, as far as like holiday theme things to add spark into it, I'm, I'm really not sure. I don't really shoot um, themed kind of stuff like that. I don't really mm-hmm. aim for, for like, you know, getting, getting holiday stuff on my grid or, or shooting in general. So I'm not really sure how to answer that. It's yeah, it, is, it is a nice thing though because there's there's like in most towns yeah in december there's generally more action oh yeah yeah the, like, you know you, you get more evening yeah. action you get you get more people being in town well um, which is which is funny if we're all shopping on amazon why are we why are we in town at all anyway yeah well i mean downtown pittsburgh there's absolutely no shopping anyway there's yeah there's no there i mean there used to be like a macy's or a coffins or something but there's really Unless you need to go to a 7-Eleven or a CVS or hang out at a sketchy bus stop, there's really not much <laughs> shopping down there. But there are there are a couple like nice theaters down there um, where you can generally catch a lot of people going in and out, and their attire yeah. is usually like in suits, and the women get all dressed up. So that that's a good place to hang out and take photos. So that's a place right. I like to go. So that it's kind of answering your holiday question. No, that's a great idea. Yeah, look, look for the look for the events that are going on downtown, yeah. and mm-hmm. and and like you say, when people are are dressed up for something, yeah, it's always a nice time to yeah. to see what what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's great. Um, do you have any? Yeah, do you have any 
photos you'd like to share with us and yeah, let me see. tell us if we can figure out what you liked about it. Screen sharing here. So let's do share screen, desktop two. Can you see? Perfect. Did, did it work? Yeah. First yeah. time. All right. So like I said, I haven't been downtown in a while since it hasn't been winter. So I'm just scrolling down here to get to where, like, for example, this guy. Tell, tell us your, tell us your uh, Instagram. Oh, it's, um, let me see, I'll just put it up here. It's Ian S. Jones, just right there, Perfect. real simple. I made it, I think, in 2012. So I got extremely lucky to have my name right. as a, I had to put my middle initial in there to get it because I, I have a pet peeve with having usernames with numbers in them. I yeah. Can't, can't <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, there's a, there, it turns out there's a guy in Tennessee named Levi Sim who's a musician. Really? So. Oh, well, yeah. there actually was... There was a famous photographer named Ian Jones. He was also a model. And I, but he, he, he died a long time ago, but he was young. So if you ever Google wow. Ian Jones photographer, or Ian Jones model, I'm not going yeah. to come up with that. But <laughs> it's just kind of cool to see that because like he had an account, I don't know, off, off the grid. But if you're scrolling down here, instantly you can see, you could just kind of see like, aspects of detail like see the cigarette oh man i like that a lot yeah so this guy was just sitting here having a having a cigarette break and i noticed that he was smoking and then i i snapped that photo and that was with um the 150 to 500 you're and, walking around town with the 150 to 500 yeah um that's awesome well but but that's what gives you that look like you can't get that yeah. with a 28 to 70 no well it, it came out and tamron asked me if i wanted to check it out and I, and I said, sure. And I know everybody that was shooting with the 150 to 500 was going out doing um, like wildlife or birds and stuff. Yeah. Birds and stuff like that. And one, I don't really have access to, you know, I'm not going to, I can't find an elk in Pittsburgh or, I mean, even in the outskirts, like I live now, we bought a house this year, but I live like 30 minutes from downtown now. Wow. So yeah. I got to drive down there now. So it's a little bit further. But I wanted to take that down there. And yeah, I mean, it was, it looked ridiculous, you know, walking around down there. And, you know, I had to hold it with like two hands. But yeah, I took that with the 150 to 500. And still, you can't see how, you know, detailed it is probably through here and on, on, on Instagram. But I saw him smoking the cigarette. And then I knew I could add more elements to the smoke. So yeah. I added that. Um, if you were able to zoom in on the full scale image, you could see that I, I made the um, the ash actually burning. That's so awesome. I, I edit stuff for myself. Like I know it's there, but you're not gonna be able to see that. But that's just just like a that's plain. Cool. You know, there's nothing really crazy good about it. But I just like that you can't see him, but you kind of like know what he's doing. And to me, he's kind of just like relaxing after. Probably he he might have just left work. You know what I mean? Just like having that cigarette after a shift. Um, well, and I, I can say that looking at that photograph, it's significantly different from most other street photography. If nothing else, like not, not only is it like artful and 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 it's got your style and everything to it, but it's it's shot with a one fifty to five, and and like that makes it significantly yeah. different in street photography because no one is doing that, and you get that compression, like you get that that emphasizes the repetition of pattern and form. Yeah, yeah this is a really there. cool spot where, I don't know what this call is called. I think it might be a bank, I'm not sure, but there's just all these pillars and there's benches in between each one of them. And I think there's probably like oh, wow. 50 benches. So, but he was the only person sitting out there. That's um, cool. You scroll That's cool. through. Like again, caught this guy smoking a cigarette. I waited for him to get that, that puff of smoke that he was blowing out. This is at one of the sketchy bus stops I had mentioned. Um, <laughs> but this is also with the 150 to 500 too. And, and like, I liked that um, shooting downtown with that because I could be a lot farther away because like sometimes people don't like their photos taken. You know what I mean? Right. Like if they, if they see you down there taking their picture, it kind of messes up the, the life, life and stuff, I, I guess, like in the moment, you know? Yeah, and you, this way you, you can be less intrusive. 
Yeah, and yeah. Less, less interruptive of their moment. Yeah, I I hate being intrusive to people too. So like the that lens was like really nice to be able to, to not be intrusive. Um, let me see, this guy, people always love to talk. I mean, this guy was just chilling, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I, I could not not take his photo because he has, <laughs> like he has he's drinking a Pepsi, which I, I <laughs> see that. <laughs> I, um, I edited, um, let me see what happened here. Okay. I changed Pepsi to Perpsy. Sometimes, I see it. <laughs> sometimes in my photos, I'll put little Easter eggs and I won't mention it. And to see, cool. if, like, see if people pay attention <laughs> enough to pick up on that stuff. But again, he was smoking a cigarette too. I add a little bit of most, more smoke there. His Jesus Christ superstar tattoo is what got me. Right. That's what attracted me to take that guy's picture let's see um i think i did i mention this guy smoking again yeah, yeah. Got him. um he was scooting across the road saw him smoking a cigarette and i knew i could add more elements in here so i put some like a a little bit of sun on the right i actually added that pigeon from a photo i took earlier in the day because i felt like that bottom there was a little bit empty so that's kind of like when i add stuff in posts that's wild to add to add more motion in there yeah, I wanted the pigeon coming this way, and he's going that way, just to kind of add more elements and stuff. And that was with the seventy to one eighty. That's probably my favorite street lens. It's like yeah. so crisp, it's so sharp, and and the bokeh on it is like nice. And it's not a very heavy lens, and mm -hmm. it, it 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 fits into like a small camera bag. That's so cool. Is it a, is it a what's the aperture on that lens? It starts two eight, so which is really it's nice true. as yeah. well. Yeah, so. I don't like going anything more than that, like like five six or anything like that, because then you lose. When I'm downtown shooting, I I think like the I'll only go to maybe like three five four. Mm -hmm. I like to stay at like two point eight. This guy too. I just like love this picture, and it, there wasn't really anything spectacular about it, other than it's not loading. Yeah, <laughs> right there it goes man oh man it's just that one just that one maybe it's too good it doesn't want to be that's right it's like, doesn't want to be shown we'll let it load we'll, we'll come back to it but it was just a man on his laptop having a drink now this one i really like because um there's all these pigeons here so you have the woman this was with the 7182 again really sharp bokeh and you have tons of layers this is why i really like this photo is because you have the pigeons in the front and then you have her and then you have the pigeons in the back and then you have these three pigeons here they're all kind of doing their own individual flap so it kind of looks like you know the photos where a guy it looks like a sequence of a of a sim yeah yeah so i was like that looks that looks really cool and that's nothing i i didn't plan that obviously it's like how could you plan that but i saw the, <laughs> i saw the pigeons and i saw her walking and i just fired off a bunch of shots and i figured i'll see what the best one is when I get home and I edit that one. So, but I, I really like that photo because you've yeah, I, I like the like color scheme as well. And I feel like everybody's been walking downtown and the birds fly at you and you you get that you know what I mean. So you can kind of feel a little panic. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you, when you're when you're shooting, do you ever get do you ever get in a funk and feel less like shooting? Like in a funk from shooting not from shit like you're walking around and you're just like man there's nothing to shoot today there's nothing to oh, like there's no all, pictures all the time i mean that's yeah that's kind of why like i have a love-hate relationship with downtown and i won't go down there shooting until like the winter so but yeah I'll, you walk around and you get the same stuff and it's kind of boring and then also pittsburgh is like small too so mm -hmm. there's other photographers down here also downtown shooting as well mm, and after right. a while if you don't have your own type of style, after a while, everybody starts to look the same. So I try to avoid that to where I can go back down and really capture my style of street photography because I believe that my style of street photography stands out more in the wintertime amongst other people. So that's kind of what I- Yeah, so, so you play to your strengths and, yeah. and you don't overuse a place either. Yeah. And you're you're, yeah, you're looking to maximize everything for your opportunity. Because Pittsburgh is small. 
you know, so there's really not a lot of, I mean, there's cool architecture down here, but it's not like amazing. Like, mm -hmm. like this. So this photo, I actually did a photo shoot of these two guys are in a band, but we were walking downtown and they told me that they wanted a photo shoot in my street photography style, which is oh, like nice. cool because it was, it was very fun for me to shoot. It didn't really feel like a, a gig at all. It was, it was just fun, but, um, just got them, cool. walking, got them walking through smoke. They weren't looking at me. It wasn't like posed. And then I added more elements of like snow in here, but just a little tiny bit. You can see like the, the, the flex of a little bit of stuff in there. I just add a little bit more smoke. Um, anytime I'm downtown and there's a street light, I add a flare hundred percent. And it's just like just enough to wear you don't really notice it unless like now you probably notice it because I mentioned it, but yeah. I like to create environments or, you know how in Harry Potter, the pictures move. Right. And there's, give us that, life, give us that there's, engagement. There's life to it. Yeah. If that's kind of how I like to approach my street photography. Rather it look like a photo. I want it to look like you can almost hear it kind of like there's stuff going on. You can hear it. I like that. I like that a whole lot. I really like this guy because like he was walking and the way I edited this photo is I made him darker to pop out from everything in the back. And he looked real ominous, like, like real, like evil a little bit, you know, I don't know. There's, there's not real really ominous for sure. Yeah. About this photo, yeah. but I just really like him. And a lot of the things I shoot as well. Um, I shoot center focus and everything mm -hmm. I do, I try to make sure that the subject or something is directly in the middle of the image. So if you take a look at the majority of my photos, whatever's dead center is like the focus of what I'm, I'm like looking at. Um, like this photo too, I can add more snow. I can add smoke, um, insinuate the headlights on the car. Like you can see the, his trail of like breath as he's walking across. Just little tiny elements like that that make make the images alive. And then um, going back to vehicles, I like to grab vehicles too. Doing mm -hmm. stuff like this, like the light on the ground. I like to add my logo into stuff too as a little oh, Easter nice. egg. <laughs> That's uh, cool. This is a photo I spent a lot of time on. This car actually wasn't moving. But oh, nice. I wanted to. Wow. So, I mean, that was that was awesome too. Again hid my logo in there um, yeah I, uh, your several of your automotive pictures stood out to me as i as i was looking at your feed again just the smoke the snow want to make images look like they're moving let me see if i can there's more stuff down here and the like you added that little splash on the the wheels of the one car up there that you showed us and uh Right here? Yeah, that that yeah, that makes me hear that like I hear yeah. cars driving on a wet street now. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean that just stuff like that. Like this woman, this woman is actually she was yelling and screaming and she was in a different world. But um I loved to I loved that her that's what caught my eye. Other than her like screaming and talking to herself, you meet a lot of weird people downtown. Right. Um, but it's it's the hood which caught my eye to that. And so I could add, don't mind my annoying dog. So I could add more smoke in the, in the snow and just really add my elements to editing. But then again, like I can go right to something else and I'll do stuff like this for a while. How and does, how does your, the, the lens you're, you're carrying, like do you, first, do you carry, do you carry stuff or do you just take a body and a lens? I take, I have um, the small OGO bag that I take and I have my body and I generally, I have my 70 to 180 and then I'll take my um, 17 to 28 and it, I'll take right those, on. I'll take those two. Now it used to be the 2875 and the 70 to 28, but the 70 to 180 replaced my need for the 2875. That's kind of how I am too. I'm like ultra wide or telephoto. Yeah, and, and that middle range is just kind of boring. And when I'll be walking around with the the seventy to one eighty, and I'm like, man, I wish I had the other lens on. Mm -hmm. and then you switch, 
and then it's it's a it's a constant battle of of what you lens you want to use because they're they're two completely different lenses and the focal lane uh, ranges are huge you know what i mean so it's like very yeah, yeah. so do you, do you feel like you um see a picture and then put on the lens to make that picture or do you feel like you see a picture because of the lens you're using does that make sense i i feel like i would see a picture because which, which comes lens. first the vision or the lens <laughs> Well, probably, hey man, it's like the what come came first, the chicken. Because, yeah. <laughs> like with the with the seventeen to twenty eight, everything's wider, and that's better mm -hmm. for you know up close or 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 lookups, and it you know you can get more of the building. So, I guess it just depends on what I want to shoot that day. But I think I think it's probably the image first, because if I know I want to go shoot street, and I'm shooting only street, I'm going to do the seventy to one eighty. Mm. so but if i want to get for detail stuff I'll, I'll do the other lens so it's kind of like kind of no like this was with right. the 17 to 28 yeah. so i was kind of in the mood where i didn't really want to shoot people i was just looking for like textures and details and and, and stuff downtown so again center focus you know real cool blues cold because I, I like to insinuate the cold and it's hard to edit this way in the summer you know, right. So that's right. another reason why I like the winter because I mean, this was not sure what, I mean, this was probably, this wasn't in the winter, but this was, but it the, feels like it. Yeah. This was with the 1728 too. And I, I, I love how it's just, it looks like it's never ending because we have a ton of bridges here in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. but I think that's really cool. I don't like, know if I've ever seen that bridge and it looks like it should be a famous bridge. <laughs> I mean, we have, Pittsburgh has so many. I think we're, I don't know, we're one of the cities that have like the most, most bridges. There's like 400 and something, I believe. Don't quote wow. me. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, if you, if you scroll through any photographer's feed here in Pittsburgh, you're going to see all the bridges in their full glory. But I like to do stuff like this because a lot of people don't really photograph a bridge like this. Mm -hmm. but there's there's tons of like texture and leading lines and, the, and it, like i said again like there's got to be something in the center always or at least it's kind of like uh you know so some people like to photograph a person's hands yeah yeah and 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 like like i feel like that kind of picture is like photographing the bridge's hands okay it's, like it's it, a, it, gives, it gives you that kind of intimacy yeah with the bridge that and it, it makes you consider yeah the, the, the thing you don't always see and i like exactly. that and then you know stuff like this like stuff like this i love i love shooting in the winter i mean this is just like my favorite time to shoot because there's like i said there's just much more to, to shoot and i mean that was really fun and that's just the little drone little drone spark but it just looks really cool to me and then i think right let me see like this i don't know if i have a so this is a before oh nice and then this is an after. So th this is just kind of like the amount of editing and, and things I do. When I took this photo, it, when I saw it, it looked like it should have been in California. With so the I reflection actually, and the light and yeah. I actually tagged the location as uh, Venice. <laughs> Venice. So I would have believed it. That's what I thought when I saw it too. I added it to make it look like it was in California with the sun. And I added some palm trees. Palm trees, yeah. <laughs> I put my name on the, I changed the license plate to a California license plate. That's so, just stuff like that I, is like fun for me and then i'll do food i mean i jump all over the place mm -hmm. so it's i struggle with that a lot because everybody's like oh if you want to grow on instagram or if you want to be xyz or get a big following you have to have a niche and you have to right. keep your grid your grid cohesive and it's just it's impossible for me to do that because yeah. I'm all over the place. And yeah. I think I'm the, like the full essence of like, I feel like photographer and content creator go hand in hand because I'm a photographer. I, I love taking photos, but I also like to create content and I create mm -hmm. content by taking photos of whichever and whatever I see interesting. So, you know, I, I also post 
like food, like gigs and stuff I get, like I do food photography stuff on the side for places. So I just, I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice by not showing everything that you're capable of or your interests and try to have your personality shine through your work versus just posting a motivational caption with the photo. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you look at all my captions, I'm telling you a story about myself or the, the thing, or I'm, I'm trying to make it as personal as possible. So you get a good at grasp of like who I am as well. So hopefully, you know, if you come across my stuff, you may just follow me because you like me as a person or you like my personality. And then, you know, my work, you also like my work too, which is, which is fun. Right this, on. I have to show this one real quick. This is one of my favorite, one of my favorite pictures. It was, um, I was doing it for this whiskey and I was just making motion. Like, like I said in the beginning, I love to have like motion in the photos and I kept doing this over and over and over and over. And I got it to where it looked like a hand, like the, the, what's it, the creation the God, what is the, 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 that famous photo where the hands are like this and God touched. Adam's oh yeah. Yeah. With the, uh, the ceiling of the Sistine yeah, Chapel. Yeah. So that's, yeah. <laughs> that took a while to do. That took a that took a long time, and I, that wasn't planned. It just kind of worked out that way. That's cool. That's really cool. And stuff like this. I don't know. I'm just I'm just all over the place, and I just like to take photos of stuff, and it's kind of where I'm at. Right on. What? Um, I really appreciate your your time with us today, and I yeah. and I want to be respectful of your time. What's uh, what what would you tell people who want to? get into or keep going or, or develop a, a street photography habit? What, do, do you have any tips for helping people? I, th I think that the biggest thing, and, and I'm still learning and, and struggling with it my, myself now, um, just take your camera everywhere. Really take your camera everywhere and just take photos because you're, you, you only get better with something with practice, you know, and it's, it's going to take a while. I mean, I have people DM me often. It's like, Hey, you know, how did you find your style? And it's just, I just shot and edited and shot and went over and over and over. And then all of a sudden one, one day something clicked, you know what I mean? And you just, you just figure it out. So keep, keep shooting, keep going. That's the best advice. I feel like you could just give anybody and the way the climate is right now, especially with like social media and like Instagram and stuff like that. Cause they're like really crushing our reach right now for photographers. And it's, everybody is complaining about it across the board and it's, it's even affecting like the big names like you know chris howe is always complaining about the reach and algorithm and stuff now and that really mm -hmm. that really could put you in a funk it is as sad it is to admit that like if you don't get certain types of numbers online you get like in a funk and you don't pick up your camera for a little bit but you have to figure out how to avoid that but just keep shooting and, and take your camera everywhere it's, I guess, the best advice I can give. Well, thank you for that. I yeah. appreciate that. And, and yeah, I, I've, I've seen that be a key for me, especially when you get in that funk. You just got to do it more. Yeah. Yeah. Conquer it actively. Um, so we can find you at Ian S. Jones on Instagram. Yep. And then I have, um, so this is my Instagram here, Ian S. Jones. And then I have, um, if you want to go deeper, you can also go to my website, which is isjdesigns.com. And um, this is where I have like contact forms. And I, I put more of like editorial work or more like work that I like, like paid gigs and stuff like that. Like if you were going to hire me or, or seek out something, this is where you would go to see all the other kind of things that I do versus just street photography. Excellent. So yeah, it's all there. Everything's there. Perfect. If you dig, if you dig deep enough, you'll find some funny YouTube videos and podcasts that are, <laughs> are hanging around down there somewhere. <laughs> they, they, they never go away. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they're there. Those things linger for sure. Yeah. Um, well, thanks again for your time, Ian. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, we, we appreciate you. And for, for you guys watching and listening, thanks for joining us on this photo focus webinar. And my name is Levi Sim. I'm at photo Levi on Instagram. And we will see you next time on.